Hello and welcome to Legacy City, or at least what's left of it. In Legacy City, the streets are filled with dark creatures beyond your imagination, and a few super-powered individuals have teamed up, whether they be villains or whether they be heroes, to work together and form the Doom Guard to prevent the Elder Gods from awakening. In this game, two to five players are going to take on the threat. They'll be challenging themselves in different scenarios and a campaign, preventing cultures from creating dire rituals and protecting landmarks across the city. The game takes roughly an hour to an hour and a half per scenario and is for ages 14 and up. And if you can complete your objective and move on to your next objective and complete that as well, you'll get to progress through the story, gain new advancements and unique choices for your heroes along the way. Will you save Legacy City? or will you watch it become um, a huge <laughs> disaster? Find out in the game Doom Guard, where I'll talk about how to set the game up, the basics of how to play, and then of course, my review. While Doom Guard might look intimidating at first, I'm going to explain the game for how to set it up in a fairly simple manner. The first we'll start with is the main game boards. You're going to have the main game board, which you will take, flip over, and place face up in front of all players, and then the following monster uh, that you're going to be playing against, the big bad, as it were. You're going to take a random landmark for each location based on the number of players in the game. We're playing two players in this example, and so I'm going to set a landmark in the two, three, seven, and eight spot. These are random landmarks, and they'll be placed on the blue side face up. Followed by that, you're going to actually take the main base. The main base is going to go in the middle of the board. It's going to be skyscraper base for this one. And I'll place it there along with any players that we're playing with. Because this is two players, I've selected a player for me and Callie, Ogre, and Echo Six. Now, I am done with this board here. This board over here is the baddie that we're fighting. It's going to have the impending doom um, situation stated here, as well as the character that you're playing as, as well as whatever main minion this monster is going to have illustrated on there as well. The main board is also going to incorporate the corrupted docks. This is basically a corrupted landmark location that you'll place here that is connected to the main game board. And then you're going to have the impending doom deck. The first thing you'll do is select a scenario that you'd like to play. And for this example, I selected the first one. I'll take the Phase 1 card, which is Stop the Spread and place it on the top of the deck. The next two cards are Basic Impending Doom cards, followed by the Phase 2 card. And there are two different Phase 2 cards that you can choose from. I selected Time for Plan B. Followed by two more cards, which I'll place right in the bottom there, meaning that you're going to have a deck of roughly six cards and place them here. Then you're going to have the Dark Portents card. Uh, these cards here are going to form a deck. Each player will select a minion. One minion must be selected specifically for each big bad. And in this case, it's Cthulhu, thusly cultists. And then, of course, Callie has selected Waki. These are like flying gargoyles. You'll take all of their base cards, you will shuffle them up, and then you will place them down on their space. The last thing on this board here is the Doom Track. This determines whether you win the game or not. You'll start it on the furthest space on the left, which is seven. And now the boards are done. Take all the rest of the dice, tokens, and characters, and just set them aside. Next, we're going to talk about the characters in the game. I selected Ogre, and I selected Echo Six, but we're going to select just one to explain how to set them up. We'll select Echo Six, and she's a more basic character. Echo Six has two decks, a crazed deck and a base deck. Echo Six is also going to come with locked cards, which you can set aside for the time being. And she's also going to have a legendary card, which you can put under your mat or somewhere within reach so that you can access it when the time comes. Take your main deck, shuffle the cards, and take five cards from the deck. And take your craze deck and shuffle it and set it somewhere to the side. You won't need it for now, and hopefully you won't need it ever. Your character is also going to come with a card and possibly tokens that you'll be utilizing throughout the game. And of course, if you selected a minion, whether it be in this case Cultist or Bwaki, you're going to take all those minions and place them on the Bwaki card. Uh, these are like minion cards that will explain what they do in their normal form and their exalted form. After you have your characters all set up and your main game board set up and all the tokens to the side, you're basically ready to begin the game. Anything else that you don't need, like characters, extra impending doom, or phases, or cards that you won't see for extra characters, can just go away from the game board. And let's play. Doom Guard is played in rounds, and a round involves two phases, the Guardian phase and the impending doom phase. Each player is going to get to take a Guardian phase, and then after each player has taken their Guardian phase, you'll trigger the impending doom, and you'll simply read and do what it says. 
To start, select a team leader. I selected Echo 6, or Callie's character, and I've placed this token here to represent that she's going first. And now I'm going to take the turn sequence of the Guardian phase. Step 1, draw a Dark Portents card. These are basically enemy cards that spawn units. I'll take the card, I'll read it from top to bottom and do what they say. Typically they will say to summon a monster of some type, and specifically to place them on a certain type of landmark. There are rules as to if you cannot specifically do this, how you randomize this, but you'll eventually be just placing these guys out on locations, or maybe even on heroes. Then you will read and follow the growing dread aspect of the car. Uh, this one says, give a Baki a energy. And so you actually take that and do exactly what that says. Once you have fulfilled the card, you will discard the card. Then you're going to move on to the next part, which is the generate power. To generate power, you'll have to actually take a number of power dice. You'll take six of these white dice and you will roll them. There are some cards in your hand that you can play to change this, and there are of course ways in which you can re-roll, but in general, take six dice, roll the dice, and then select four of them and place them on your player board. These are stored power that you can utilize, whereas the rest of them will go away. There are ways in which you can re-roll with your cards, but additionally, if you want, you can take corruption, these little tokens here, on your board to re-roll dice. You have a number of corruption that you can take before becoming corrupted and going crazed, so be aware of that before deciding to re-roll too many times. Each of these dice here has a unique action. One could be to increase your movement speed by two, your movement speed is found on your character board, and it is in blue. So if this character has two and I use one of these feet, I can move four instead. Another is a while, which means you can choose anything you would like to do. You have the might. This is what's going to allow you to enter combat. And then you have energy. And energy is basically going to give you these energy tokens that will allow you to spend them on certain abilities in the game, as well as on your character cards. Additionally, there are locations on the game board and you can take those actions, specifically most of them are going to cost some sort of energy and perform whatever it is they say to do. On your turn, you can do any of these actions, but only once unless there is a card or rule that states otherwise. You may move up to your number of blue movement. You may engage. You will enter, a, when you enter a space with an enemy minion, you may fight that minion by spending an engage die. And you'll basically be uh, entering combat, which I'll talk about at the end of all this. Uh, the next one is you can rescue bystanders. You can take a bystander that's on a location and rescue them, basically putting them into your hands and carrying them back to your base. Uh, you may do a landmark ability and you may do any scenario abilities. Now in this case here, uh, the very beginning of the game, you are supposed to flip over one of these, uh, flip over one of these impending doom uh, cards, which is gonna be phase one. And it'll tell you what to do. In this case, this one here says you would just simply reveal the top card of the impending doom deck and do what it says. Uh, guardians take two corruption immediately after resolving a move action. So for this round, this will be what happens throughout the entire round. So uh, basically those are like things that are going to occur. And then the main card here is going to tell you any special abilities or actions you might take. And this one here says you'll be trying to remove corruption from landmarks, placing locks on them. And when you do a number based on the number of players, you'll move on to the next one of these guys here. Back to your turn though. After you've done all the actions you want, which could involve playing as many cards as you want, each one of the basic actions, and any of the scenario actions and or landmarks, then you'll move on to the draw. You can discard any number of cards from your hand based on the deck you currently have, and then you'll be able to draw up to five new cards. If you ever play cards on your opponent's turn, they're gone and you won't get them back until the end of your next turn. And that's basically how a player takes their actions. Now let's go into a little bit more depth before I cover the impending doom. Firstly, each of your cards is going to have a cost on the left hand side, tells you what to do in the bottom, and then when you can play them on the right. Teamwork cards can be played on your opponent's turn or yours. Uh, solo cards can be played on your turn. And then there are the uh, guard cards or doom guard cards that you can play at any point. They're special cards. Most of the cards, you can read them and determine them for yourself, but these are definitely handy and explains how they work. And some of the cards, and a lot of them actually can be free and will gain you additional energy and be able to let you move to different locations. The main actions um, that you're going to be trying to take in this game are basically protecting and removing the threat from the game board and utilizing your actions for whatever the scenario calls for. Additionally, if you ever take damage, you will place it on your game board 
if, for every five damage you take, you're going to lose one power die. So you can take up to, I believe, 30 damage. So you want to be careful with how much damage you take. Um, and if you take too much corruption based on your character board, uh, in this case here it would be seven, uh, then you're going to become crazed. And how crazed works is pretty interesting, uh, or corrupted, I should say. You're, you're going to take your deck and set it aside. You'll take your character board and you will flip it over. And now you are going to be using the crazed deck. Any cards that were left in play, because some cards trigger and stay in play, will be removed and you'll have a new hand of cards with this new deck. When you are crazed, when you're crazy, when you become kind of a cultist yourself, you cannot perform some of the actions in the games, most notably the actions involving the scenario. And in order to become uncorrupted or redeemed, you must do whatever it says specifically for your character. This will tell you how to utilize it. And each character functions differently, so I'll leave that for you to kind of figure out. Um, other than being crazed, the other things that you want to note is that each character has their own kind of minions. It's just so that each player can kind of put them on the board and make it easier. But each of these minions have a card that indicates how they function. On the card, it will state how many dice they roll in combat, how much HP they have, and then what they do based on the rolls they make. Finally, there's an impending aspect on the bottom here. Enemies in play will affect the impending doom phase, and I'll cover that more later. The last thing is combat. Combat is actually very simple. I place my character on a base based on me moving there or a card effect, and then I enter combat. I will take six dice, um, and then I will take dice equal to the number of baddies that I am going to be fighting. Uh, in this case here, I've got a Bwaki, she's got two yellow dice, so I would take these. And then, without anything else, I would just roll. I would check the effects. So there are three different main effects for the good guys. They can accidentally do damage to structures, they can save damage from structures, and they can do damage to minions. I'll check the HP of the minion and check to see if enough damage goes through because everything happens simultaneously. And if I do enough damage, I remove the minion and gain XP. The minion itself will resolve its effects, and you'll check the board to see what they do. It could be that they're dealt, they do damage and move the guardian in some way, or that they gain a shield protecting them from damage. And if you need, or want to, you can play cards from your deck in order to basically give you an advantage in combat. Whenever you complete certain things in the game, you'll gain experience. And experience is used to gain keys to the city, uh, these guys here based on the landmarks that you have, and also to upgrade and gain your legendary card. These are very useful and powerful effects that can help you throughout the game. And that's pretty much all you need to know, because each of the different characters has their own unique abilities and each unique cards that can be played. I'll explain a little bit more of that in my review, but as far as combat goes, you take your dice, you take your enemy's dice, you roll them, and then you calculate based on what they say that they do. And it's all very simple and straightforward, and it's also explained not only on your turn sequence, but in the rulebook as for what each of the little symbols mean. Now, let's cover the impending Doom phase. This phase here is going to start by having the team leader follow, resolve each step. The evil threat, resolve each step on the impending Doom effects list on the evil board. There is a little board here that illustrates what you do um, when this phase happens. Placing a number of cultists or bystanders on certain locations, placing additional corruption on landmarks, etc, etc. And then you'll move on to resolving in the, in the next impending doom card. You'll take one of these cards from the top of the deck here, place it out, and do its effect. Eventually, hopefully, you'll be able to solve the, um, the first phase, move on to the second one, and complete that before the end of the game. Because during this phase, if this deck is emptied, if there's no more cards on the impending doom deck, you're going to start moving up on the Doom Track. There are a number of other ways in which you'll move up on the Doom Track, and basically, if this Doom Track ever goes to zero, you're going to lose. It's one main way in which you're going to lose the game, with a variety of ways that this is going to be able to happen. The next thing is there's a board threat. The board threat is pretty simple. You resolve each landmark and also any minions on the board. Uh, each landmark that has been corrupted, there's a number of ways landmarks will be corrupted. Generally speaking, it'll be from minions. Um, and if that area on the board is ever filled, you'll flip over the landmark. And if it has an impending doom, which it very likely will, you're going to do whatever that says. And you'll follow them in order based on the number of two, three, seven, and then eight for a two-player game. Otherwise, it would be one through four, five, six, seven, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, minions will have their own. You'll check their card. Oh, in this case, the landmark takes one corruption. Or in this case, all guardians take two damage. 
followed by after doing all this, you're going to resolve um, the, the effects of all this and flip it over. So basically just do all that, do the board, do the, um, do the card or anything else that is evolved over here, and then check this board over here and do all that, and then back to the guardian phase. Start with the leader and progress and play the game out. Your objective in this game is to complete the scenario. Go as fast as you can. Sometimes it's not worth actually dealing with minions and whatnot. You need to complete this thing here and move on to the next one and complete that to win the game. If the Doom track ever hits zero, you're out. That's a basic idea. You can play it campaign mode in which you'll go from one story to the next with a bunch of upgrades. And oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this game. So I think I basically covered out how most of the game works. Let's talk about my review in which I'll cover even more. Okay, so let's review Doom Guard. And the first thing I wanna say is that this is a prototype. Rules and card and text and art are possible to change and that that might might happen so just be aware of that even though this looks like a fully fleshed out fully done game there are things that will be changing in the game let's talk about the theme doom guard has this theme of working together with heroes and villains to accomplish a goal greater than oneself dealing with something that's uh, insurmountably evil that will destroy not only everything that they know and love but everything and everyone and so they have to basically put their differences aside and work together to stop the threat. So just once when bad guys were bad guys and good guys were good guys, now everybody has one goal, to stop the impending evil, to prevent the doom from surrounding the city and destroying everything. And so that's what you're doing in this game. On your turn, you are engaging as best as you can with the threats that are appearing, helping your uh, comrades, whether good or evil, and dealing with the threat that is basically insurmountable. Your objective in this game isn't to necessarily save everyone or everything, but to get the objective done. Stop the rift from opening. Prevent the ritual from starting. All these kind of things. Locking down locations to protect them from being corrupted. And so the theme fits really well and really deeply into the story. It feels good to move from one location to another using the characters as well as the minions themselves and watching what they do. And it's a dice chucker. You're chucking dice. You're trying to mitigate that as best as possible with cards in your hand, taking more corruption. You're kind of making yourself evil to thusly prevent evil from spreading. And there's this like teeter-totter or this like just like a pendulum that swings back and forth that you have to try and keep control of while also staying on the straight and narrow. You cannot simply do everything, and if you do, it's going to crush you. That being said, the theme is wonderful. I love the idea of having different monsters to deal with in different scenarios, the impending Doom cards coming out, filling the game with theme and story, being able to read the scenario book and presenting new aspects to the game so when you're playing Scenario 1, for example, there's still unique phases in the game that you can choose that you might not have played before, um, or different types of impending doom that come out that also have their own unique story to them. Quality. The game is got quality. Like, if they just released it just as it is with all these type of components, it is right where it needs to be. The miniatures are beautiful, high-quality miniatures that are very, very detailed in their design. Feels good to move them, feels good to hold them, and they just stylized. I love even that the bases are done on these characters. They went above and beyond when it comes to that, and the characters themselves are really cool. My favorite character by far is Ogre. It's this gal in a mech suit that moves around, and she has so many complicated, like, unique little twists and turns to her, while still being pretty straightforward as to how to use. I love the idea, too, with the gameplay of locations being destroyed. Now, you can move on to spaces that are empty, but they don't do anything or help you in any way. Um, and these spaces can give you tons of benefits, but if you allow them to be corrupted, it's going to make your hero's journey much more difficult, or villain's journey, right? Um, and so there's all these little things that happen just on the game board. Even though it's kind of a light little game board here, there are threats that are going to be insurmountable, and sometimes you'll have to kind of pick and choose your battles. Characters. I'm only going to talk about a couple because there's a bunch, but Ogre here is my favorite. Uh, so I want to gush on this one here. You're going to utilize these critical system cards, which are not from Echo, and, and these cards are how you're going to gain, um, how you're going to take damage, which which will then flip the cards over and make them like nastified. It's going to turn these really useful cards into cards that are unoperational, which will affect the cards in your hand because certain cards, a lot of cards, will require a certain type of system to be operational to use them. Additionally, becoming corrupted you're gonna place your corruption on these cards as well. And if you have enough corruption on the cards, you'll flip your character over. And each character can become corrupted, but this one has its own kind of unique way. It's like a, a one for, like, no, four parts to corruption and to damage. And while you don't ever get out of the game or lose the game, it does significantly hinder you if you take too much damage. If you can become corrupted, it doesn't necessarily mean you can't play. You are still playing with a new deck of cards. And even sometimes some cool little twists to how the deck works. 
But at the end of the day, to complete the scenario, you've got to be able to be uncorrupted or have it so that your opponents can complete it who are not corrupted. Dice, excellent quality, really feels good to roll them. The symbols are very straightforward and you can recognize them. Ah, it's the hand with the arrow. Ah, look at the blocky card. Okay, hand with the arrow. Do two damage and guardians damage are placed in a random landmark. Speaking of random, I don't know what they're gonna use for random. I've just been using a four-sided die for the two-player game. I roll the die and select a space, one, two, three, four. It'd be cool if they actually included something that was random, um, a random die of some sort. I don't know how they do it exactly. Maybe cards that they flip over that makes it random. Because there are certain instances where like Milwaukee will spawn or cultists will spawn in certain locations and those locations won't be available or the, the character won't be available. And so it becomes kind of this like check the next step on the on the thing to determine what the next thing it is that you place this on place it on this character. Oh, that character is not there. Then I must place it on this area here. And, and so something like that, a randomizer, would be really cool for the game. Um, each of the characters here also have their own unique abilities and functions, like Echo is the speedster, and she can move twice. And her cards are all based on her speed and utilizing energy and power to kind of move along and get to where she needs to be to solve certain things. She's like the solver and the speedster. What well, was this character here? He can just drop onto a board with tons of minions that occupy the space and thwomp and just destroy everything and gain tons of value. But you have to be careful too. When you do too much damage from your attack specifically, you can damage the location, destroy it, and each space has a limited number of models that can go there, except Ogre doesn't care. She just walks on the space and if it's already full, she can just kick somebody out. Bam, and they're gone. And then she can thwomp the whole space. I, I love the design with these characters. And then the old one, it, it all feels really surreal, really, really cool attached together. Not the biggest fan of the uh, art on the main character boards. I feel like maybe adding some background or something like that to the board itself might help the character out. Feel a little bit more dark and gritty because the game is so dark and gritty in every other way. And these are a little less than that, but it's not a really big deal. Uh, cards are pretty straightforward with their text and what they do and whatnot. And there's singular artwork, but I have no idea what the final product's gonna look like if there's multiple different types of art for these cards here. And so I'll kind of decline to comment on that kind of stuff. Overall, this game has a ton of cool stuff. I only have one character that I'm playing, the one big bad that I'm going against in a certain number of scenarios, but I had a ton of fun going through this. It plays really well at two, three, four, I didn't play five, but two, three, and four players. It played fine. I, I got to go and experience everything and it played differently. Even when I played the, how the, I played the characters and they function differently. Um, and of course, like the scenario when you play, there's, there's obviously things that kind of like come back and you see, but the fact that there's so many different impending Doom cards and the story attached to those uh, makes it a refreshing experience each and every time. Uh, this game has a lot of like feeling towards those uh, Arkham Horror type games. Um, uh, another game called like World War or whatever. It's, it's, it's called like, um, I can't remember the name of the game, but you're moving around spaces defeating monsters and villains. But this one adds the locations and the corruption and it just like feels really, really meshed together. I, I really enjoy that. All the artwork is phenomenal and the game just looks really well fleshed out. I am a big fan of Doomguard and I'm really excited to see what all the new old ones they're going to apply to the game and how different they're going to be. And the fact that you can play different scenarios and unlock new things is awesome. And being able to utilize your experience to gain certain benefits is just great as well. Okay, I'm done gushing. But yeah, Doom Guard's a really cool little game. Check it out. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Doom Guard. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there's a link down below in the description. You can also check out our live streams every Wednesday and Sunday. Sunday's on Twitch Kicks. Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And then Wednesday is whatnot. And you can watch us play games, sell games, all kinds of crazy stuff on those sites. So come come join us, have some fun. And of course, the website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to working with you heroes to save the city next time. <laughs>